Welcome to another edition of the Gold Nose Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is February 20th, 2020. I got about five different five different segments for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Um, the first segment of this episode is entitled James Wilder Jr. Was he better suited to play linebacker? All right. James Wilder is a former running back for Florida State. Uh, we are I'm pretty sure you guys already know that um, he was the number one athlete coming out of high school when he um before he uh committed to florida state and he played linebacker in high school i mean he had several years with double digit sacks and he was just a phenomenal talent but when he got to florida state i mean he was playing behind a couple of pretty good running backs who were already there um tremendous athlete man and this this guy i mean rock solid i mean this dude was a specimen and um in my opinion i think he would have been a first round pick at linebacker all right for he's a power back you know he's a guy that likes to run people over because he's 6'3 230 pounds is what i'm looking at i don't know if these are exact measurements i've seen other sites that have, that have had him at 6'2 227 I don't know his exact height and weight, but that's around 6'2", 6'3", 230, give or take. And uh, while at Florida State, he uh, he won um, he won uh, Most Valuable Player in the uh, ACC Championship game his uh, junior year. His career numbers are, you know. Uh, 1,363 yards, 20 touchdowns. I mean, that's a season for most guys. But, again, he was splitting carries. I think what killed him in terms of the NFL draft was his 40 time. He ran like a 4.65. He went undrafted. Um, I don't know why the NFL put so, puts so much emphasis on the 40 time. This guy is a player. Okay, he is a he's a beast, but like I said, he should have switched to linebacker. Um, he's he he's talented enough to play either position, and he can excel at any position. But just for staying power in the NF in the NFL, I think he should have switched to linebacker. And I know at that time you had Telvin Smith and a couple of other great ones on there, but I think he could have got in there and been a starter. I think he was that talented, man. Um, he, um, when he got to the NFL, he went undrafted. As I said earlier, he started out with Cincinnati. Then he, uh, went to Buffalo. Then he moved over to Canada with the Toronto Ar Argonauts. And, uh, now he's with Montreal Alouettes. And, you know, he's doing pretty good for himself. In terms of, uh, I hope he makes it back to the league. I wouldn't mind. The San Francisco 49ers do not have a power back. And that's really one of the issues that we've had on this team. This would be a great addition, in my opinion. Uh, this guy's a beast. And, you know, and Shanahan has made his, uh, you know, made his uh, thing saying, you know, he's going to be a, a coach that likes to run the football and but when he got to the Super Bowl he didn't run it but this is a guy he's only 27 all right he can he could come in and help us um his dad is James Wilder senior he played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh this guy uh this guy's a beast man and I hope he makes it back to the NFL and I thought, well, he's under contract with the CFL, so he couldn't have came. He couldn't have went to the XFL. 
but I, I felt like if he had the opportunity to play on the, in the XFL and get that exposure, that would help him get back to the NFL. But at any rate, I, I'm, I'm uh, hoping that he everything falls right for him and he gets back to the NFL. All right. So let me know what you think about that segment. James Wilder Jr. was better suited to play linebacker. All right. Next is going to be Mario Edwards Sr., not celebrated enough and let's see here now this guy was a this guy was a tremendous uh um this guy was a tremendous corner for florida state i he i want to say he was a part of that um that 1999 uh national championship team and um i mean and we just had a tremendous defense man tommy polly bradley jennings brian allen Derek gibson sean key i mean that was just like a tremendous defense man and he made all acc um let's see i'm trying to find him on the internet i should have had this ready already but and my typing skills are putrid uh give me one second here all right so yeah so he was on that um 1999 championship team he was drafted in round number six of the nfl pick number 180 six foot 199 got uh started with the cowboys stayed with them for three years uh then went to tampa bay for one year and then the dolphins for one year um uh, He's actually from Georgia. And uh, let's see. His junior year, he had six interceptions, um, 11 passes defense. Um, as a senior, uh, nine passes defense. And. He didn't have any interceptions. I think he kind of, you know, established himself as a pretty good corner. I don't know. I thought he played for the Raiders, too. I don't know why. I'm, maybe that was the son. I think that was the son that played for the Raiders. Uh, but somehow I'm just picturing him as a, uh, as a Raider for some reason. But this guy was a tremendous talent, man. And I, I just don't, I don't understand how the NFL just dismisses guys like that. Um, in 2002 with the Cowboys, he had 72 tackles, two interceptions, and eight passes defense. That was a solid season. Um, so I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, his career was just cut short. He was a... Uh, he didn't really do anything with the Dolphins or the Buccaneers. Uh, then he started his coaching career. He was with Florida State for a while, and I thought Norvell would have kept him. I thought I think he would be a tremendous DB's coach. And, you know, I felt like Norvell should have at least kept him on as an analyst or something, man. You know, this guy's been working behind Odell for a while. He could have helped us out. But for whatever reason, Norvell chose not to keep him. Wherever he lands, I hope he does well for himself, man. Um, from from what I've read on the internet, from what I've uh, from from the videos that I've seen of uh, Odell Higgins talking about him, he's a tremendous guy. So I hope he lands on his feet and does well for himself. Let me know what you think about that segment. Next segment is entitled "Offensive and De Defensive MVPs for the 2020 season." This is a prediction, of course. <laughs> Um, 
I'm gonna on defense, I'm gonna go with Emmett Rice. I think he just he was coming on, man. He he was coming on. He was I mean, he was really peaking. You know? You you know on like the old NCAA football games when a player got hot, his little his little star or light started flashing. That's what he was doing the latter part of the season. And if he can carry that over into this year, I think I think you're looking at maybe a second or third round pick, man. And uh you know, I was down on this guy before last season started, but once he got out there and started getting playing time, he he turned into a tremendous talent. Um uh, at least for a couple of games anyway. Um let's see what we got here. Um uh, apologize for the dead air i listen to some of my podcasts and i always have dead air i apologize um I be, i'm trying to freestyle episodes now instead of writing everything down and and so it doesn't sound so scripted but uh emmett rice 6'2 220 red shirt senior uh appeared in all appeared in all 13 games with nine starts 72 tackles uh one sack uh, 14 tackles for uh, he had a career high 14 tackles uh, against Wake Forest um, you know this guy I think he's poised to have a tremendous year man he's from Miami um, and he's waited his turn he, he had the issue with his arm or forearm the forearm injury a couple of years ago he's overcame that and I think this guy's going to be a tremendous player for us this year. I think he's going to be the leader of the linebacking uh, core. So, you know, I hope he I hope he has much success, man. And uh, let me know what you think about that segment. My prediction on the starting linebackers, uh, I said this on yesterday's episode, Emmett Rice, Gaynor, and McCray. And I think... Uh, you know, in nickel and dime situations, you would probably keep Emmett Rice on the field. I think Emmett Rice should stay on the field. And so let me know what you think about that segment again. I'm going to move on to the next segment, which is entitled, Why is Netflix so addictive? Like, when I'm not working, I don't even, I do streaming. I don't even do, like, cable no more because it's too expensive. So I got, like, Netflix, and then I got the Fire Stick. And, you know, the fire stick works when it wants to. Um, so the one thing I can depend on is Netflix and no commercials. Man, I've watched docu-series on hunting, fishing, nature, prisons. Uh, I was watching something the other day where this guy down in New Orleans, his son got killed and he just took on really the whole he, he found his son's killer. He solved that case. And then he took on the fentanyl crisis. I mean, this guy was a beast. I don't want to say his name because I don't want to potentially get sued or nothing. But, hey, man, that was an incredible docuseries. And, uh, you know, I, I really don't watch a lot of the anything that I watch on Netflix is something that Netflix made. I don't watch like movies that other companies made it's always something netflix related um so i I love what they did with the um aaron hernandez thing um just just how they did it i'm not saying i love the content i love how they presented it and they did a good job on it i don't know anything the facts about whatever it was just a good whatever good uh series so um let me know what you think about that is Netflix addictive? And uh, the last segment for this episode is entitled, What No Pastor President Would Make a Great Pro Wrestler? And the obvious answer is Ron Simmons because he already did it, so I'm not going to say him. And I touched on this guy at the top of this episode, James Wilder Jr. If your career doesn't work out in football, WWE is the next thing, man. It has to be. I mean, I man, you you are a very uh uh 
what's the word articulate intelligent guy that that has to be the next step for you you got the size you got the strength i would love to see this guy in the ring man i would tune in and watch this guy he has the personality and everything um and that's really the only guy i can really think of at the moment um yeah i I can't really think of anybody else maybe dontavious jackson he he, he's kind of outgoing and he's got personality like that um i could see him going in that direction dontavious jackson has the look to be a pro wrestler um so we'll see what happens man um that's going to conclude this episode i hope you enjoyed it um it's available on youtube apple podcast google podcast spotify podcast um if you're listening to this on youtube please scroll down to the description click on one of the links rate review subscribe i appreciate all the support i appreciate everyone who listens every day i love you guys um and as always go nose